Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today this is a tutorial talking about this house construction animation. Uh, the same technique can be also used to make car transform animation. It's just a different application. And uh, as always, we are going to use the presets which you can download for free from the link in the description. If you do not want to use presets, you can go to the right upper corner. There is a uh, tutorial link uh, in which I talked about a major principle without the presets. So let's start. So here we in Blender, before we actually go into uh, the house model, uh, which you can also download for free from the link in the description, uh, we are going to use a plane uh, to discuss the basic method so that you can apply the method to every model. So let's add a plane and a geometry node at a grid. Uh, this is a procedural grid so that you can subdivide it freely. I think a 1010 is enough as we can see the wireframe. Uh, let's increase the scale a little bit too. Okay, so this is a procedural grid. And uh, the preset we're going to discuss is basically called the edge of face. I've discussed in the previous tutorial, the basic principle is uh, basically the face, uh, is corner of face, vertex of corner and the uh, edge of vertex so after this uh, complex algorithm essentially what you're getting is the edge of face uh, exactly the same name as the preset and uh, by getting this edge position we can set that as a pivot for this polygon to rotate we can also use a similar method to get uh, a face tangent uh, so that it becomes an axis for this uh, polygon to rotate. And to use that is very simple. You can see there is a mesh input and there is a mesh output. So what you do is really just put this edge of face um, in between this mesh and the geometry. So that's nothing happens. <laughs> but uh, these values are being applicable and uh, the rest is really just about how you use that. Uh, since this tutorial is about the house construction or polygon unfolding, we're going to use the set position. And uh, if you plug this edge position into the position, everything will be disappeared. Uh, however, if you try to use the mix node to mix vector with its uh, original position. So let's take an original position and to replace it, then you can realize uh, the disappearance is because uh, every vertex of the polygon is merging to the edge position that we are selected. Okay, and uh, there are two modes uh, in the default setting to uh, select the edge. Uh, one is the farthest, the other is the closest. So, and by default, the evaluated fact fa vector uh, is at the word origin. So. For this polygon, if you are going to choose the farthest edge, of course it's the farthest edge uh, on the most left side. Okay, that's why it's converting to it. And if you switch off, then it becomes the closest the mode, then it will select the rightmost edge. So this is basically the principle. Okay, uh, let's change the subdivision into the 1111. So that we have a better result. Okay, so basically this is kind of an idea. And uh, what do we do since we are trying to do the polygon unfolding? Uh, we are going to use the vector rotate to rotate these results based on the pivot, which is edge position. And the axis will be the face tangent. So now if you try to put an angle on that, you can realize uh, these polygons are rotated based on the edge it's selected. Okay, uh, there are some uh, up and down relationship, but I don't think there is something, it's something that you need to worry. It's more related with the axis that we choose, um, but uh, I don't want to deal with that uh, in this case. Okay, so the rest is really just about manipulating this kind of uh, factor and the angle. So let's just start with a proximity four. I've discussed this proximity 4 in the tutorial. And let's add an empty 
uh, as a control. So we have a Sophia. Um, I do not see that in the viewports. This is because I uh, unfortunately disabled that in the overlay panel, so in the extra. Okay. So I can disable this control. Okay. So this is uh, we can name that as a fourth. Okay. So we have this fourth, and uh, what the proximity fourth is doing is that uh, in the center, this is outputting one, uh, and uh, at outside the this is sphere it will output zero. So inside is one. Uh, outside is zero and uh, in between this kind of two points is between one and zero so this is basically the idea so we plug this uh, proximity fourth into the factor and the angle so now we do not really see anything because we need to select this empty okay. so now you can see the scale in the center has been enlarged um, because it's uh, the value is closer to one at the center so it gets a position. And for this angle, we're going to remap uh, 0 to 1. We can reverse the relationship. So that basically what it does is, uh, let's see, take a pi. So when it's at the center, it will not rotate. But if it's outside the center, it will rotate. So by scaling up and down this fourth, you will get a kind of a transition effect. Um, we can make a color ramp to make this transition sharper. And what you can also do is trying to use this full file animation to instead of scaling up and down uh, this uh, empty, you can have a single slider to make this animation. I think this is already kind of a very nice, interesting thing to make it appear and disappear. Okay. Uh, previously, I've discussed the relationship between farthest and the closest. Uh, you will realize that uh, for an appearing animation, for an appearing animation, you probably want to use the closest edge. But for a disappearing animation, you probably want to use the farthest. So now if this is an appearing animation, but if you're trying to use the farthest, you realize it's a little bit weird. So you try to want to use the closest. Okay. Can we reverse this relationship? Uh, of course, yes, I think. So let's reverse this relationship. So now I try to disappear, uh, make a disappearing animation. Then in this case, instead of the closest edge, I will try to use the farthest edge. I think this is pretty interesting. So basically this is the idea behind all this kind of animation. So this setup is very convenient and it's procedural. Uh, you do not need to worry about the, what's, how this preset is essentially being built. You do not need to worry about all these kind of nodes. Uh, even if you worry about that, I've already discussed the major principle of that without presets. But uh, I think this is convenient, and the more importantly, this is a procedure, which means uh, if you do not want to use a grid, you can use a UV sphere. Uh, it will basically do the same. 32, and you can try to manipulate this uh, animation, then you will have whatever animation. Okay, um, or you can use uh, whatever other stuff. Um, comb, cylinder, torus, Suzanne monkey. I don't know. Uh, it's just a procedural, so you can just increase the segments and you play with the, this kind of fourth animation. You have appearing, disappearing animation. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention that uh, you have this custom vector. This is not something I made up by myself. Uh, when you're trying to use the geometry proximity. You have this source position, and this cost, uh, this source position essentially is really just a position attribute linked that to that by default. And this is the same about the custom vector that you input a position into the vector. That's the default. Uh, but you can try to try to manipulate this custom vector. For example, if you want to add some noise in this appear and disappear, you can use a preset which is called a vector noise. Then you have some noises. Uh, in this appearing and disappearing effect. 
And uh, there are many different ways that you can play around with that, which also means that it can work with a collection of mesh. So I have a house model. As I mentioned earlier, that it is, I'm not the author of that. And uh, thanks for people who shared, who made a retopology of the original model and uh, shared that online for free. Uh, you can download this for free from the link in the description. Uh, but uh, it does not really matter. Uh, what you can do is, uh, you can just uh, take the model and what you can do is you take a collection info because everything is in a collection. You, if the collection is called house, then you put a geometry inside the mesh. But it will not really work. The reason is that uh, this geometry essentially is outputting instances. Okay? Oh yes, I forgot to take that. Yes, this geometry is outputting instances. And uh, in order to really manipulate the geometry, you need to realize the instance. But when you start to realize the instance, you also need to be aware of this time. Uh, in fact, before you realize the instance, you want to be aware of its topology. Uh, how dense the mesh is, that's the biggest problem. Especially in the current geometry nodes, we do not have any kind of decimate modifier. We do not have a decimate, and we do not have a remesh. Decimate is the best method to decrease the subdivision. And the remesh is also a kind of retopology method. But we have none of them inside the geometry nodes. Which means if you're working with a very dense geometry, this realized instance will cost a lot of performance. And more importantly, this edge or face will cost a lot of performance too. And this set position will cost a lot of performance as well. It will be very heavy for this entire system to operate, especially if my computer is already poor. So you want to check the topology, whether your mesh is dense or not. Okay. Uh, so for safety, I'm going to just apply, uh, put all this kind of uh, put all this kind of geometry in the house. I only leave one one floor, the first floor or ground floor, into the geometry, and uh, I realize it's it's very heavy. It's like 27 milliseconds jumping to 600 milliseconds, and the set position is another 600 milliseconds. There is nothing I can change that. It's the nature of this algorithm. But what you can potentially do, I don't think if I can show that smoothly or not, uh, by manipulating, for example, the to one, then our geometry disappears. Uh, it doesn't happen. Why is that? Zero point two. Oh, it doesn't work. Oh, because the fourth is too small. The fourth is too small. So for the moment, I'm just going to increase the size of the fourth and turn that back on. Uh, nothing changes. Let's add this fourth animation to one. So now you can see there is a half destruction of this entire model. <laughs> and basically that's the idea. You can play around with all these kind of values. Um, let's turn back, turn off that again. Turn this white and... Uh... So now you have a kind of appearing animation. Okay. So basically this is the idea. Uh, there is one side effect. Uh, there are several side effects I have to remind you. I've watched the original Polygon Unfolded animation by Antagma in Houdini. I realized that they spent one hour in this their tutorial. And their setup is much more complex because they, it also involves the parenting of Polygon, which is not a presenting in my case, because in my case the Polygon are separate to each other. So one rotation is not necessarily affecting the other. There is no way I can do that uh, in the current geometry nodes because we do not have a loop and many other functions. Uh, the second thing is uh, this collection info node will make the, the object losing its UV. Actually, this isn't a correct description. The major idea I've discussed in the past is that its UV layer um, is not being recognized uh, by shader nodes. 
So uh, if you are creating an object, uh, if you are adding a material and the control T, you are having this kind of texture coordinates giving the UV. Uh, it's not working. This UV will be not readable by this texture coordinates node. And you have to use an attribute node to give the UV layer. And so on and so forth. I've discussed this kind of issue in the past. This is a, these are a known issue in geometry nodes. There's also nothing I can really do. So when you construct the model, you probably want to be aware of this kind of issue. Anyway, uh, but basically this is the concept of all this kind of idea. Other than that, I think this is fine. So feel free to experiment all this kind of thing. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Probably see you next time. Bye-bye.